Hey everybody, Steve Dangle here with Dan Riccio. And listen, I, I'm in a fighting mood on account of hockey's coming back. So why not start with, uh, I don't know if you can tell I'm a Leafs fan. And it's for a reason. They got the best team in Canada and they're gonna win the North Division. Dan, prove me wrong. Well, this is uh, pretty easy to prove you wrong on this one. I mean, it, from everything I can see, around the country and around hockey everybody's just like penciling in the leaves oh yeah we've got the north division champion right here the maple leaves austin matthews and mitch marner oh and they added a future hall of famer and joe thornton who's got no stress well as the columbus series probably showed us all steve these games aren't played on paper, and when the Leafs need to get the job done, they seem to fall short. And that's kind of a trend that's uh, lasted longer than Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner have been in the league. Well, yes, and uh, many of my friends have uh, done a good job of pointing out that the last time the Leafs won a playoff series was literally half my life ago. Uh, I was 16 years old. Um, and listen, noted, but let's stop living in the past. Like you said, Austin Matthews, uh, uh, an elite goal scorer in this league, top five, uh, Mitch Marner. They, the one thing I'll say about him is they keep talking about him being in the Art Ross conversation. Well, say it with your chest then. Actually get in there and be in the conversation. Um, Joe Thornton on the first line, I'm not totally sold on, but I think he's going to give the team a new flavor, a new vibe, and the most underrated storyline in the country, in my opinion, at least when it comes to hockey, uh, the Canadian hockey teams. Morgan Riley is playing with the best defensive partner he's played with in his entire career in TJ Brody. You can't tell me that's not going to have a massive impact on this team that has struggled mightily to defend a lead over the last uh, forever. I, I can't believe you've disrespected Cody Cece and Ron Hainsey that way, but- uh, Ron Hainsey's number two. <laughs> <laughs> like, like that's how bad it's been. And now they're going with TJ Brody. Okay, you're not wrong on that. Frederick Anderson, I've still got question marks. I know at the high end when he's going, he could be as good as any goalie in the league, but you know, the inconsistencies were too much for the Leafs to overcome at different points last year. That really hasn't changed. And if you want to look around Canada, Look at every other team. They've all gotten better this offseason. Montreal had the most aggressive offseason in the league, and they're maybe as deep as any team in the Canadian division. Winnipeg still has the best goalie in the world and really high-end scoring. Calgary added Jacob Marks from finally fixing their goalie issues. Edmonton's got the best player on the planet and the reigning Hart Trophy and Art Ross winner. Plus, they made some shrewd additions with Kyle Turris, Dominic Cahoon, and yes, even that guy that nobody likes in Toronto, Tyson Berry was probably in for a bounce back year. Absolutely, then, uh, that one I'll agree with you on. And then we can't forget about the team that actually was the best in Canada last year, and that's the Vancouver Canucks, who have the best defenseman in the division in Quinn Hughes. They also have Elias Pettersson, who is primed to enter the super duper star territory of Austin Matthews and Connor McDavid. He is that damn good. So yes. I'm, I'm not totally believing and I'm not anointing the Leafs, the North division here. Yeah, I do I do find it kind of funny that Frederick Anderson has this reputation for, you know, being really good at times, but not really being able to get it done. And Thatcher Demko, after having three really good games in the middle of the <laughs> summer, is all of a sudden the next George Vesna. I mean, I, I the guy well, allowed a highlight reel goal from Mark Marino. goalie here, Steve, and Braden Holpe. Can't forget that. No, you absolutely cannot forget that. And I can't be like, well, he's over the hill when <laughs> the Leafs have added Wayne Simmons and, and Joe Thornton and even uh, reigning Stanley Cup jam, uh, champion Zach Bogosian. Really, uh, yes. that's who we wanted to steal from the Lightning all along was, was, was Zach Bogosian. Well, finally, the Leafs have uh, looked in at saying, uh, okay, maybe we do need a few intangibles just because they lost a series to Columbus where their shooting percentage was below 2%. So may maybe a bit of an overreaction there, if you're asking me. I think I think that was something that was a uh, long time coming because I don't know if you guys know this. The Leafs lost to uh, an, an emergency backup goaltender. I don't know. A lot of people, it was really not covered much by the national media. But uh, that was, underratedly, the last game before the trade deadline <laughs> for the Leafs. So I don't, I don't think the overreaction was to Columbus. I think the over, well, the reaction, the perfectly understandable reaction 
was to, oh my God, they can only muster seven shots <laughs> against uh, an emergency backup. So uh, I think they're a good team. They're the best in the North division. They do struggle at times. And I think they've addressed this issue that has now, I, I can't believe that game was still less than a year ago, but they have finally addressed uh, that issue and they should be the best team in the division for it. I will take the field over the Leafs. Thank you very much. All right. Steve Dangle, the right one. Dan Riccio, the other guy. <laughs>